Number 48. At room temperature, the equilibrium constant Kw for the self-ionization of water is 1.00 times 10 to the negative 14th. Using this information, calculate the standard free energy change for the aqueous reaction of the hydrogen ion with hydroxide ion to produce water. And then hint, the reaction is the reverse of the self-ionization reaction. Okay, so let's start from there, right? They told us that whatever they're describing here, hydrogen ion with hydroxide ion to produce water, this is the reverse of what they described before, that self-ionization. So we want to find the standard free energy change for this reaction. Now, keep in mind that hydrogen ion is the same thing as saying hydronium. Right, hydronium ion? And... Um, hydrogen ion, hydronium ion, if we only want to produce one water, right, we would use just H plus. So I'll say H plus hydrogen ion, literally H, and that's aqueous, plus the hydroxide ion, hydroxide is always OH minus, that's aqueous. And since it's talking about equilibrium, this comes to equilibrium to produce water, and water is a liquid, H2O, liquid. Okay, so there is your balanced equation. Now they're saying that this equation is the reverse, which literally means that it is flipped, right? It's the flipped reaction of the self-ionization. And they told us that the self-ionization K value is one times 10 to the negative 14th. So if this is the flipped version, what do you think we have to do with that K value? Yeah, we also have to flip it or reverse it. So this K value for this specific reaction would be the, in, the, the reverse. So instead of just having one times 10 to the negative 14th, it's one over that value. So let's just find that out. So this would be, and maybe since we need a little bit more room, I'm just going to maybe bring this over and there goes the P. I'll put it back. Boop. Okay. So this K value for us would be 1 divided by the 1.00 times 10 to the negative 14th. So let's find out what that number is. So the K value for us is one divided by, and now let's um, put in this scientific notation value without uh, parentheses. In order to do that, what we're gonna say is 1.00, and then we're gonna use this EE button. If I say second comma, this means times 10 to the, so you don't even have to put in times 10 to the, you just gotta put in the exponent, so negative 14. And the calculator will understand to keep this all together. So you never have to use parentheses again for a scientific notation. And it's going to be 1.00 times 10 to the 14th. Well, that kind of makes sense. So now we have our K value and we want to calculate the standard free energy change for that reaction. Well, Standard free energy, right? Free energy, we're talking about Gibbs free energy, so we're solving for a delta G. What's the formula between a delta G and a K value? Well, that's this right here, right? Delta G equals negative RT times ln of K. And the K value is what we just solved for, 1.00 times 10 to the negative 14th. Well, now we just need to know R and we need to know T. R is a constant value. Specifically, if we're using energy values, this is going to be 8.314. Units are going to be in joules per mole times Kelvin, which means that we need to find a temperature in Kelvin. Now, they're talking about standard, and they said room temperature. Room temperature is always 25 degrees Celsius. So even though they didn't give us a temperature, Room temp is always 25 degrees Celsius. 
So if I say that room temperature is 25 degrees Celsius, the R value says I need it in Kelvin, K for Kelvin. But that's okay, because I could just convert Celsius into Kelvin by adding 273. More specifically, I'll add 273.15 to get a more accurate value, but that is 298.15. This number is like ingrained into my mind. Room temp, 298, 298.15, same thing. And now I think we're all covered to find out that delta G. So let's just plug it in and solve. Delta G, standard, you know, Gibbs free energy, is negative, and then we have the two values ln of 1.00 times 10 to the 14th. I just saw that I put negative 14th. We're doing the reverse. This is 298.15. And the R value is 8.314. Okay, we could plug this all into the calculator at once. The negative is in the formula. So negative 8.314 times the room temp, 298.15 times natural log, which is the LN button, that's here. And then I'm going to do that, that EE thing again. 1.00 second comma, that means times 10 to the, and then I'm just going to put the 14th, and then enter. So I get negative, I guess we have three sig figs here, so we'll just do three sig figs. So negative 7.99 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, and that's joules per mole because the R value said, here's the units that didn't cancel, joules per mole. Typically, a delta G should be in kilojoules, so if we just need to convert from joules to kilojoules, just know that joules to kilojoules is always dividing by 1,000. Or you could take the decimal, move it to the left three times. So if you just take this number, divide by 1,000, there you go. So delta G would be negative 79.9, and that's in kilojoules. And that is the answer. And I think that's the only answer for this question, right? Calculate the standard free energy change. There it is, negative 79.9 kilojoules per mole. Thank you so much for viewing the video. I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments, subscribe to the channel. We're almost at 25,000 at the moment. So it's all because of you guys. Thank you so much. Let's keep growing the channel. Keep getting the word out there that this channel exists, that education is fun, and we can help you guys in so many different subjects. We have physics and math videos on the channel right now with more to come in the future. So check back. All right. Love helping you guys out, and I hope you guys have a great day. Bye-bye.